Hi, hold on a second here. Give me one second. I got to do something real quick. One sec. I'll be right back. Let me go and take care of this. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm back. Now, that's a goofy way to start a live stream, isn't it? All right. Welcome to live stream, everybody. Might as well go a couple minutes early. Uh, Mr. B's Fish and Things in here early. Thank you very much for sharing it out on Fish Tuber's notification, of course. Uh, Daryl Deemer, Logan with Ambest Aquatics. How y'all doing? Thank you very much for being here. Five here, three thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's getting down to crunch time. Two weeks from today, I close on my new home. So I'm pretty excited about the whole process. I called the power company today. Hey, Robs. Alien World Aquatics. You're the first person in history to have guppies breed. Well, there you go. There you go. It. Uh, I'll tell you what. I've got uh, more guppies than I know what to do with. Uh, I had somebody uh, line up. In fact, this happened during the live stream on Saturday. I had someone lined up to buy 20 male uh, swordtail guppies, and then the guy canceled on me. Woo! Well, hopefully he uh, he gets in and uh, and does it again. So I have uh, a bunch of male swordtails up on uh, on Aquabid, and I also have it on. Um, I have it on uh, uh, I have it on eBay. So there you go. And so uh, it's uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, swordtail guppies. Do you have double swords or single swords, Alien World Aquatics? I have single swords right now, but I'm hoping uh, when I do crosses, I'll begin to get double sword tails. And uh, and so I was looking at a video that our friend, uh, oh, Single Swords, yeah, that's what I have. Uh, I have a, a bunch of, I'm doing a cross right now. And so hopefully I'll begin to see as they begin to get mature here, I'll be, be able to see some double swords. And uh, yeah, that's sort of what, sword tails are a little bit smaller than the deltas. You know, the deltas get so big and uh but i will say this is that i have swordtail females that i've bred you know in the fish room that are as big as delta females they're huge i had uh, one of my aquariums two really large females and they hadn't dropped anything nada nothing and then boom a uh, total go through so Past videos, in fact, I just got off the phone with our buddy Doug Gray. He just gave me a ring. It was nice to say hi to him, and I had to cut him off because I was speaking with you. He was making dinner type of, uh, I already ate my dinner. And no, you really don't want to know what I ate because it was not very exciting. It was healthy. So, okay, I'll tell you. I had a salad with the least healthy thing I had for dinner. I put blue cheese on it because I love blue cheese dressing. I love blue cheese. As a kid, I wasn't that hot on blue cheese. As an adult, all about it. My mom used to make vinaigrette and would make her own vinaigrette and then would put it put blue cheese on the salad with uh, you know with her own homemade vinaigrette on it. It's delicious. So uh, but I I just I love blue cheese uh uh you know dressing that's uh so i had that on a salad with some salt free that's how geeky i am salt free sunflower seeds sunflower kernels i should say not really seeds because they didn't have the outside thing on them you know the little kernels so that was good and then i had zucchini because i could cut up a couple of big slices of zucchinis to give them to the fish and uh, I eat a lot of zucchini and a lot of uh, and a lot of uh, uh, um, I eat a lot of uh, uh, yellow squash that crook neck yellow squash thing and mainly because I give them the, I big, give big slices to the fish kind of how I roll because uh, the plecos love them 
the Mika Splendens uh, go through it. I got home from work today, and uh, and I'm preparing something for work tomorrow. And so I go to work early. I go to work at like 5 a.m. So I got home at about 2.30, and then I worked until 4.30, then I cooked dinner. Oh, Bola wants to get down. For those of you who are... Uh, who are uh, taking doing the shots per deal? There you go. So, yeah. So I had to prepare stuff. I had to write stuff. Uh, my employees in the afternoon were sending me things. I had to rewrite stuff. It was uh, it was going through. Tomorrow we've got uh, a lot of junk going on. So that's what we have there. So that's kind of exciting. Um, sorry for yawning. I. Uh, so I got I got done with that and Bo, I took Bolo out for his like fourth walk of the day since I got home. Um, his uh, his congestive heart failure medicine makes him urinate, and he lets me know when he wants to go. And it's uh, he's bossing. When he wants to go, it's now. No wait ten minutes. Now, starting in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna have a backyard. By the way, the stream on March 2nd is not going to happen. I'll be taking that day off, and I'll probably be taking that Saturday off. I'll be doing the move. And uh, so the idea here is that on I have coming up, um, I close at like 2 p.m., so like 3.30 or so. Uh, one of my employees and his son are going to help me uh, move in a rack. A giant fish rack that I'll pick up at Home Depot and I'll have wood cut out for it at the same time. Uh, and I also have to like rent a, a U-Haul uh, right after that and like a van and haul that stuff over and uh, and haul over the all the aquariums I have that are not set up. Get those up and running. And then... Um, on the second day, I'm going to start loading water into the aquariums. And my goal is, is for Sunday, I'm going to move into the house on Saturday. I'm going to have everything out of my place except for the fish. And uh, so once I have the fish over, I'm going to go. And uh, once I have that complete, I'm going to... Uh, uh, you know, take down the aquariums and move over the aquarium. Essentially, I'm moving three times to get everything in there. But once it's done, it's done. I'm never moving again, ever. I'm in there till you know, the coroner is going to have to haul me out when I'm 90. That's how, you know, I'm going out toes up. So I'm, uh, I'm relatively happy with, uh, you know, the whole process of the fish. And the whole process of the stuff. And uh, just been having a lot of fun. Having a lot of fun getting ready uh, getting ready for the move. I'm going to be able to have... I'm going to end up having like 22... Uh, uh, lumpy dog, that's how I really feel. Just letting it out. Sharing with you from my heart. How do you do that? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That looks bad. <laughs> By the way, the shaving of the hair down was a pretty good idea. You know what I'm going to do on my next haircut? I'm going to shave this down to the skin. I'm going to do as close as I can for a balding man to have a mohawk. Why? Never had one. And it's fashionable. You see all the young kids doing it. You know, I'm uh, one of the hip, groovy kids. So I have to order more fish food. I ordered some stuff. I have to replace uh, things in my... Um, in fact, I just got the notification. Alexa, what's the notification? One new notification from Amazon Shopping. Activated carbon bags has arrived. Yes, yeah, so I had activated carbon bags to replace in my uh, uh, canister filter. So when I moved the canister filter over, 
I'm gonna replace all that uh, all that stuff and do a quick clean out of it as I get up and move that over. I'm gonna move this over and hook it up to the new aquarium and uh, allow everything to flow. Um, you know, moving the fish is not an easy deal, as we all know. But I'm gonna have the water up there and I'm gonna have the water filled and treated. This is sort of my Tell me if my logic here is terrible, because I would love to, I, I, you know, again, I like your thoughts on it. My deal here with this is that I'm going to bag up. I don't know if I have enough, uh, uh, you know, I have a pretty big melon. I don't know if I have enough hair, you know, have enough. Uh, it would have to be a barber who is pretty slick at that. So. You know, I guess I would have to, you know, find out one of those barbers that has all of that stuff figured out. So, yeah, to go out and, uh, you know, do Mob Guppy in the back, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. One of the things I've done with my eBay and uh, my my eBay listings and my, uh, uh, you know, Aquabid listing. Oh, guess who wants to come up? Okay, Bolo. Now he runs away. He scratched my leg twice, usually a high sign. Hold on. Come on. Now he's licking my hands, but I cannot get my hands on it. Come on. So this is this is my eye. Uh, this is what it was like to have a small, spoiled sissy dog. Now he just rubbed my leg again, twice in a row. Come on up. Okay. So whenever he wants to come up, he'll scratch my leg. My legs, by the way, there's a reason I don't show them on the screen very often, is that, uh, is that they have scratches from him. It's uh, He sort of scratches, lets me know when he wants to come up. I lean over, then he runs away. Then he comes back and does it again. And then he does the downward dog and promptly wants to get in my lap. So there you go. So, yeah, so I'm going to go move the filter over because it's already seated. It's all, ready, it, it's all ready to go. It's going to be a little bit of a, a bigger tank, uh, but the flow will work just fine. And uh, so I'm going to hook it up. You know what? I should be the energy czar, shouldn't I? It's... Uh, you know, that, that wouldn't be that bad of a gig, I don't think, except I think the hours are really long. But you get a book deal about it. So Bolo says, hi, Doug Gray. Welcome to the live stream. Um, yeah, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Since this thing is already seated, I'm going to move over. I'll bag up the fish and the shrimp, turn on the heater with the thing. I'll allow the the fish and the shrimp to remain in the bags for you know four or five hours as everything gets up and running, and then let them go into the aquarium. And so that's essentially what I'm thinking I'm going to be doing. So I'm looking forward to giving that a shot and uh, getting everything moved over. Um, I've got like uh, I've got to sort of go through. I have like open boxes here. I haven't quite hooked up yet. They haven't quite thrown away yet. So I got to get that done. Anyone use the Fritz seven bacteria in a bottle? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Robs. Here's the deal. Is that uh, I think that uh, the bacteria in a bottle is kind of a scam. And, you know, natural bacteria develops on its own. It, uh, you know, let it develop, let it develop in and see what's going on. I, you know, I just have not had a problem, uh, with, uh, with that going on. Just don't overload the aquarium. And, you know, now what people do, uh, for seeding sponge filters is they'll put the sponge in an active aquarium. And they'll squeeze out the sponge a little bit, allow natural stuff. Then they'll put it on the thing, put it in the, the new aquarium, and it has some bacteria in it, which will grow very quickly. 
Uh, one of the problem, one of the things when I set up a new guppy uh, trio with a new, uh, you know, with a new sponge filter, so I'm only setting up a trio. So I'm only setting up three fish. How dirty can it get? You know, if there'll be a little bit of a spike, but there's enough room, there's enough water. Guppies aren't that big. And so it'll begin seeding itself very slowly, but you really don't have a problem with it. Now, if all of a sudden I put 30 guppies in a tank, guess what? In a 10-gallon tank, all hell's going to break loose if that's a brand new filter and a brand new, you know, brand new sponge. And I, I've become uh, in love with uh, the uh, the sponge uh, filter with the chamber at the bottom and where you put filter media in the bottom. I really like that a lot. Um, I I have been sort of talked into, and because the because of something called coronavirus, I was trying to order uh, those the other day from the people that bought them. They didn't have any in stock, and so you know I'll look on eBay right now because it takes. I uh, they come from Hong Kong. And uh, and they come in. Uh, it usually takes about a week and a half, two weeks to get here. So it's uh, the ones that I happen to really, really like, and uh, that I have in a lot. I have them in. Let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. I have them in eight of my uh, ten-gallon aquariums. And I'm just sort of going through right now, and it doesn't look like they're available at all, um, which is unfortunate because I really, really – oh, here they are. But, yeah, they're selling them for a lot more money than what I was paying for them. I was paying like uh, six fifty. And uh, and they're now selling. Let's see if I buy four or more. Uh, well, I guess not that much more. It's uh, you know it's you know four more seven sixty nine each. Is a free shipping. Let's see here. Yep, free center shipping. Oh, and it's in the United States now. Okay, last time I bought them, they were coming from uh, you know from Hong Kong. So. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of a scam uh, for the fish. One of the things I I really want to do for the guppies, I haven't quite done them yet. I give my guppies a wide variety. Yeah, I know. Math, not necessarily one of my strong points. I'm, a, you know, as a high school athlete, I was elusively slow. Not that quick. My secret was, is that uh, I was actually the third wide receiver on my high school football team. And essentially what it, what it was is that I was so slow that usually by the end of the first half, they started leaving me wide open, thinking, well, they'd be able to catch up to me, which is probably true. Um. And at some point, I would get wide open. And I didn't make an athletic catch. Uh, there was no Randy Moss. There was no, uh, you know, there was no great, uh, you know, Megatron, uh, the, the former wide receiver with uh, Detroit. No Megatron type of finger grab or anything like that. Had to come from here to my belt line right in the middle of my body. And if it came that way, I would catch it. Not in a beautiful uh, type of way. It would be more of a, uh, when everything is said and done, it would be more of a, uh, just a quick grab. Is Salty Reef in the house? Hey, Melvin, how are you? I didn't see Salty Reef. Sorry if I missed you. And uh, no, I was not Peter Diggs. I was not Stefan Diggs. I was not even Steve Largent. I was slower. I was uh, I was a very slow man, and uh, and so, but my goal was is that, you know, I would get so wide open that I would, uh, you know, that 
you know, it was just the quarterback would sling it as far as he could. And it also have to be if the quarterback had time. The court, you know, but at some point he is going to get time. And I remember I was there waiting to catch the ball as being chucked across. You know, this wasn't Peyton Manning. This wasn't, uh, you know, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson or, uh, or uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, you know, this ball was coming pretty slow. And the quarterback was chucking it for uh, his entire life, his entire worth. And, uh, and yeah, I scored, you know, I scored, I would get, get big first downs, but I'll tell you what that happened one time. They had a guy on me the rest of the time, the rest of the time, elusively slow. The coach would be in that guy's head saying, yeah, you do not allow mob guppy to be open. So, you know, when they gave out the tries, the hardest thing, you know, for the kid who's the lousiest athlete. I got that. All right. So, yeah. So here's what's going on with the fish. In fact, I was telling Doug Gray here just a little while ago. Uh, you guys saw this thing where I was featuring this male that looked so fantastic in the 55 gallon. He never, I moved him over to the, uh, you know, 10 gallon with a group of gals. He's never looked that good. So I'm going to swap him with another. He has genetics passed on. There's a bunch of fry in here and they're, you know, and, you know, all the younger ones are, you know, maybe the first drop wasn't his, but the younger drop certainly is. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go have that all set up and uh, and get that all in case. I do have to, uh, to go out and order. And I was looking at uh, a couple of different websites. I generally like to use the Fish Fam and because uh, it's just – and – there's like these North Finn, um, North Finn uh, kelp uh, wafers that I understand is really really good. That uh, that they go in. Okay, yeah, they're now in one of the fish fam sites. Okay, I'll order those. I'm uh, I've got to order a few different types of fish food. I it's uh, I have some of Doug Gray's uh, fish food. I love them. I love it. They uh, they eat that every day. I have New Life uh, Spectrum uh, flake food that I use. Um, it's uh, I use the uh, the ultra pellet guppy type thing, and that's uh, and that works out really well. So I'm uh, yeah again pretty happy with. Uh, uh, pretty happy with all the different things that I have. So it's, uh, yeah, so I have to get, uh, you know, some uh, kelp wafers for the uh, plecos. I understand that's a, a good one to get. And let's face it, do we really need, uh, you know, you need almost any type of food you can ever get. It really is. Now, I do have a question. Which New Life Spectrum do I have? See, I don't even know which one I have. I'm like looking through a website, New Life Spectrum, and I, I'm not going to walk over there right now. I don't have discus formula. Just uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Don't have that at all. Good to see you too, Melvin. Uh, it's uh, Bob Kaler in the house. How are you doing, buddy? Great having you here. Great having you here, and uh, and you know got Logan here. Mister Bees was here right off the bat, right before the stream, uh, 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 you know, kicked off. He was the first one here, but I haven't seen him since. So I think he just dropped in. and Goes, yeah, this guy isn't here. Heck with him. I'm gonna go do my own thing. I'm gonna go uh, probably clean out water, clean out aquariums, do some water changes which I needed to do this weekend on a couple of the tanks I didn't do. So I got to get that done. I've got to do a bunch of changes. And then I, I have the uh, garbage pail that I use to age the thing. I have to get a second one. Yeah, you see, the Bob Kaler YouTube War Royalty. Exactly right, Lumpy Dog. Exactly right. Go hogs, go! You see it backwards. I haven't figured out how to turn that around. 
You know what I'm drinking? A Fresca. Went to Walmart and picked up a two-liter bottle of Fresca. Delicious. So, oh, it's not backwards to you guys? Okay, good, good news. Okay. Said go hogs, go. So, yeah, so when I'm done with tonight's live stream, I've got a uh, set up. I have a shipment going out tomorrow, uh, which is nice. So I'm kind of excited about that. And uh, and uh, I've learned all sorts of stuff about it. Big J's Fish Keeper in the house. Yeah, Bob Keeler is the only thing standing between us Living in a free society and Chattanooga Ed taking over the entire world. It's all gone right. Hey, David Samsel, how are you? Welcome to the live stream. You see? There you go. And, you know, I don't know about you, but you can't have enough aquariums of uh, guppies. Now, now, Doug, how many do you have up? Do you have, what, about 70 guppy tanks set up? Bob Kaler, how many do you have set up? I know you have some guppies. You guppy people, how many guppy tanks do you have set up? It's, uh, let's see, I'm shipping to uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts uh, tomorrow. You have 85 tanks set up? Doug, there you go. Yeah, Big J, you know, we all need more guppies. I saw one that our buddy H. C. Agua did over at his buddy's house. The uh, blue uh, grass guppies. Holy capoli, those look good. Let's see here. Who did I miss coming in? Vinny the Mooch. Vinny the Mooch is in the house. Welcome to the live stream. Great seeing you all here tonight. Oh, you only have five? Yeah, you know, Bob, I think you need some more. Room Balls Fish Room. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Love having all of you guys here. Thank you for the thumbs up as well. I appreciate it. So, yeah, so I'm going to move stuff over. I'm going to set up more breeder tanks. And then, uh, you know, then the fun will begin. I um, Now, I have a question for you because I'm now getting into the point where I have to, like, up my, uh, my brine shrimp hatching game. To, you know, I see these, like, four-quart hatches. And I'm going right from there, and I'm going, ooh, that's looking to be pretty good. And 32 tanks total, just uh, just a few uh, guppy tanks. Five, well, you see, there you go. Uh, in the house, I have decided that the first rack of aquariums is going to be in the dining room. Why in the dining room? Um, because I can't do, uh, I need to convert one of the rooms to uh, hardwood floors, one of the bedrooms, and I don't have the cash to do it on my way in. So it's going to be, I'll have to do like, uh, you know, I have to go get some financing and get that taken care of. So that's one of the things I'm going to have to do. I'm also thinking that another place, I have a huge laundry room. So I may put, set up a rack of uh, aquariums in the laundry room. Just like Red Lobster, exactly. Well, you know, hey, guys and gals. I'm, uh, uh, I'm single. It's just Bolo and me. What do I need to do? You know, I don't, you know. I'm not having people over. It's not like I'm, I'm not entertaining. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, Rumball's Fish Room. I do the smaller ones, and I hatch every day. I hatch every day. And I, I don't have one that follows up. It takes about 30 hours for them to get in because I don't put the heat light on it. It, it probably goes a little bit more than this because, you know, at night I drop the heat down to like 60 degrees. I like uh, sleeping like, uh, uh, you know, I like just being, you know, just totally out and asleep. So there you go. Sort of my, you know, sort of what I do, uh, you know, for you guys. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I, you know, I'm looking at Gemco. I may end up having to do, uh, you know, trying out some uh, box filters. And I've looked at this long thing of, uh, you know, the PVC pipe, pipe they have set up uh, to run your your air through. That's looking pretty sweet. I may be doing that. So there you go. That's right. Fish tuber and prompto raid on... Uh, Peter's new house. I'm going to get a grill. I'll make uh, tofu patties. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, Rumball, I do not have them foul up for me. Uh, maybe I'm just lucky. Um, you know, it's uh, Doug Gray. He hatches out a much more, uh, uh, you know, much more stuff. So, yeah. So, again, you know, I've talked about my diet before. Is that uh, a couple of years ago, I went in for the yearly, uh, you know, pull your, pull your blood out, do the complete medical tests. And it's covered by your insurance for free. So do it. Everyone should do it. Okay. A couple of years ago, I went in and my cholesterol was on the edge of being to the point where they were going to give me medicine to lower my cholesterol. Not doing that. It's uh, I can change my diet. I can change what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm spending, uh, I buy aquarium salt, the API aquarium salt. Works just fine for me. I've not used pool salt. I've not, uh, you know, I've not used, uh, I think some people use kosher salt. I've not done that either. So there you go. It's, uh, so what I end up doing is this, is that uh, I lowered my cholesterol in one year from 211 to 179. And essentially, I'm a modified vegan, except I eat eggs. I eat eggs. Uh, I, I eat eggs almost every day. I mean, I, I have it five times a week. But I eat it with vegan sausage, and I do whole wheat toast and that. So, But today for breakfast, I had a vegan frozen breakfast from Gardein. It was actually pretty good. Hey, Carrie Nature, welcome. Thank you for lurking. I appreciate it. Anybody who comes in, it's all good. Yeah, you don't. Here's the deal, in my opinion. And again, I'm not somebody, Rumball, that, uh, that, you know, I'm not the greatest expert on this. I'm just tell you what works for me. I don't use a light on it. In fact, well, here, you know, in my current place I'm living in and in my new house, um, it'll be hatching, uh, you know, in the, I have it hatching in the kitchen. And there's some room light, uh, but I have the shade closed when I'm not at home. And it works out just fine. I, you know, it's uh, in the summer is a definite 30 hour deal. So there you go. Chewy, what's up? Welcome to the live stream. So, yeah, you see, I end up, I probably should do kosher salt just to be fair. 
and because that has no additives to it and uh and it's much cheaper so uh, yeah i'm you know it's uh i'm always looking for ways to save money so yeah so the house um i move into it uh you know, on the seventh, I'll move in. So no live stream on the seventh, no live stream on the second. I'll do my first live stream from there uh, on Monday the ninth, and uh, and get that up and running. So we'll get everything going on with the fish. We'll get everything going. I'm going to spend a lot of money on gas for a couple of weeks. I'm driving back and forth. But once that's done, it's done. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited about it all the way around. So I'm looking forward to closing on the house and getting getting in. It's just all good. This weekend, I almost got nothing done for the move. So I, I've got to really step it up this weekend. I've got two weekends to go. So, uh, Chewy, are you coming down from Canada? Oh, Canada. By the way. Anybody watched the NBA uh, All-Star Game last night? Which was great. It was lots of fun. But their pregame was like 45 minutes. They did a thing for Kobe, which I get. But both national anthems. Now, the Canadian singer sang the Canadian national anthem. I wasn't familiar with her. And she took a perfectly fine national anthem and butchered it. But she was then topped by uh, uh, Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan, who's a great singer, absolutely fantastic singer. Um, I don't know what the hell she was thinking of when she did that version of the National Anthem. I mean, it was just horrific. She has much better ability, as you know and I know. So it's just, I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, that was a bad, bad version. I think she's a Chicago gal, so that makes, uh, that's going through. Grandpa had a flying pig. Oh, anti-caking additives? Okay. Uh, okay, thanks for the tip-off, Lumpy. Thanks for the tip-off. Yeah, both of our countries let us down in a big way. It's, uh, you know, O Canada you know, it's a pretty simple one to go do. Hey, down the wormhole. Hey, D, how are you? So, yeah, so I don't understand. It's uh, it's uh, the version of O Canada, that woman went way off the script and say to Chaka Khan. So, Yeah, too simple. Well, but you know what? The the Canadian national anthem is simple, but it's beautiful, and go from there. Hey, Aquaballs, welcome to the live stream. I'll take the family out to dinner. Take them to uh, In-N-Out Burger or Whataburger if you can. If you can't, uh, take them to somewhere fancy-like, like Panera. But if you have kids, they probably all want to go to McDonald's. Do kids still want to go to McDonald's? Is that still, if you have anybody who has little kids, are they still all down with mm -hmm. McDonald's? And yeah, well, you know, it's having some delicious food is always good. And going to Knott's Berry Farm. Okay, well, that sounds good. I think that sounds really good. When I when I go to uh, Fayetteville, I always end up going. And next time I go down, I have to go to Whataburger. Again, I'm not a complete vegan. I eat red meat about once a week or chicken about once a week, fish once a week. I don't have any uh, salmon in the house right now, primarily because I'm in the process. Since I'm moving, you know, you have frozen the frozen stuff that I get Sam's Club. And I just don't want to, I'll buy that for the new place. So, but I, I love, uh, I love salmon. Uh, I love that whole thing. So I'm pretty excited about it. 
So I, I, you know, and the other thing about moving is that you have to set up all the utilities. So today I took care of the internet. I took care of the power. Um, the city, uh, the suburb of Joplin, if you can say that there's an actual suburb to Joplin. Uh, the suburb to Joplin uh, has, best way to describe it is, um, you know, is that they the city does its own utilities. They do the sewer, the garbage. No, they don't do the garbage. They do the sewer and the water. So I've got to call them and hook that up. And then I have to call the garbage company to get that going in. So pretty exciting. The person who developed a railway in British Columbia went down with the Titanic. You're kidding me. And neither one of the singers even touched them, the song sung by another Canadian. Yeah, there you go. When I played basketball in school, we're not allowed to catch a pass, jump forward and take three steps back without dribbling and shoot. Yeah, the NBA, you know, it's uh, the one thing I'll say about the NBA is this. Yeah, and I grew up with the same thing, Lumpy Dog. I played basketball uh, and in high school. And I'll tell you what. Even though I'm 5'7", is that I would crash the boards. It's uh, if the, When they allowed me into the game, I'd crash the boards. And, you know, among the trees that I was around, I would throw elbows. I mean, I had elbows going out constantly. And ironically, I never got called for a foul. They always called the big guys. And... They weren't doing anything wrong. I think one of them pushed off on me because I was elbowing the hell out of him. You know, it's called defense, defense being, you know, but apparently the the refs could not quite fathom the idea that this little guy was in there throwing. Uh, I was a small shack. Yeah, that's correct. My free throw was a little bit better, but again, a five year old's free throws were a little bit better. Shaq, Shaq though, was, uh, yeah, he talk about fun. I love Shaq. I, uh, I I think the world of it. So, yeah, so the fish is going on. Everything is going there. And uh, and so I just, my phone was going off. And, uh, and so getting, uh, yeah, so, I, so the internet gets connected uh, the Friday after I move in. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, my high school's team, the center was uh, was six six, which at the time was really big. You know, there were the tree type people. Now in the you know in the NBA, the smallest guy in the NBA now I think is six three. You know, I mean they're all huge. All right, I fell out of the conversation here. And uh, see here. So they start on their coronary heart disease early. It's a tradition. I'm trying to figure out where that, uh, what conversation I've, fa I've fallen out of, uh, Bob. <laughs> Fresca. Uh. Yeah, so in the fridge right now, I have uh, I have Fresca. I have Diet 7-Up. You know, Agua, you know, normal stuff. Yeah, you see, hockey... You know, when I was in high school, my old man would not allow us to play hockey. I'm from Minnesota, which is almost as hockey oriented as Canada. And I'm not being, I'm not joking about Canada. I'm talking about how Minnesotans are as nuts about hockey as Canada is. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, is when the U.S., you know, I was like, 
I guess eight years old when uh, when the U.S. won the gold medal in the 1980 Olympics. So the idea is this. Hey, Madfish Diva, welcome to the live stream. Great to have you here. Um, you know, Minnesotans love their hockey. And my old man, who was cheap, not in a bad way, you know, kind of a good way, but he was cheap, okay? Uh, he looked at us and he said, neither of you, my brother and I, neither of you are going to be professional athletes. Um, you're not playing hockey. You're not playing hockey. How old are you, Lumpy Dog? Uh, and, you know, he goes, play basketball. All you need is a pair of shoes and uh, shorts. And this is before the days. Uh, yeah, Neil Broughton, absolutely monster, monster player. And uh, I do remember a North Stars versus uh, uh, Edmonton Oilers game where Neil Broughton and Wayne Gretzky dropped gloves. Okay, so you're four years older than me. Nothing wrong with that. So they dropped gloves. And they started... And, and it was Neil Broughton who threw him down first. Then there's Wayne Gretzky dropping gloves. Uh, that may have been their own, the lone fight they ever had in the history of, uh, of their two careers. Because neither of those guys were huge guys, especially Broughton. Broughton wasn't a very big guy. So, yeah, so whenever, you know, whenever there is, a, in fact, I, I need to look that up and see if there's a lot. See if there's a YouTube video of that, because it, it was hilarious. So there you go. Well, before I get go down the hot uh, flyers, feast egg. The flyers have, and feast egg, you're going to agree with me, and Doug Gray, you'll agree with me as well, because you're a Philadelphia guy, is that the flyers have the worst mascot in all of sports gritty is terrible gritty is even worse than the dancing tree for the stanford university cardinal yes okay good chewy i'll look that up gritty is awful no gritty is terrible <laughs> absolutely terrible I, when the, all of a sudden it came out, we're gritty. Man, we're really off fish talk now. <laughs> gritty got into a, a, apparently punched some 12-year-old kid. And, uh, and it turned out not to be true. But still, funny, funny, funny. Absolutely funny. So there you go. The gretzky Broughton fight. Yeah, okay, I'll be watching that later on today. Thanks for putting that up, uh, Lumpy. It's, uh, yeah, I know Gritty was cleared of punching the 12-year-old. The By the way, when that came out, I was just like going, oh, please, Lord, let that be true. Please let that be true. Terry's Tropical Tanks. Oh, is the Daytona 500 on? I wa I was watching that yesterday, and it just never happened. Then I watched the NBA, and, you know, today I've been busy doing junk, getting stuff organized, getting ready for, uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, Gretzky and uh, uh, Broughton, yeah, neither of those guys are fighters. They're lovers. They're lovers. They're not fighters. So, yeah, so that's that's all good. All good all the way around. And, uh, all right. Okay, I have to get with, uh, 
got a note from somebody at the office. So uh, not a big one. I can worry about that tomorrow. I arrive in the office before that guy does, so that's good news. Oh, the green right checker. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, by the way, about NASCAR, and I've been to some NASCAR races, and they're fun to go to. Here's the deal with NASCAR, is that their season starts with a crescendo. The biggest race of the year, their Super Bowl, is the first race of the year. And by the time they get to uh, Hempstead in Miami, they're waiting to name their champion, but nobody cares who the champion is. They have no, no one cares. No one watches that race. It's uh, 39 weeks of NASCAR racing is way too much. They're almost racing. They get them like 12 weeks off. I mean, these poor guys, I mean, it's just they got off, uh, what, the third week of uh, – November was their final race. It's the you know second week of uh, uh, you know second week of uh, of February, and they're already starting their season. I mean these these guys. I mean they don't even know their wives and children. They these guys probably can't even name their children. They're never home. They're always on the road. In fact, the children are probably all belong to uh, the personal trainer of their wives. All right, H.C. Agua, what's up? And, uh, no, these are stock cars. They should be able to race in all weather. Uh, that's my opinion. So, I've been to Talladega twice, which is fun. And I was at Talladega for the final win, the final victory of Dale Earnhardt. So, I was there. Sitting on the trioval, not too far away from the finish line. So it's pretty cool. And then that next uh, February, he died in the Daytona 500. So there you go. Ah, very cool. Very cool, Madfish Diva. Yeah. So let's see here. By the way, Jesse, you were doing this thing the other day showing your buddies tanks and uh, those uh, bluegrass. I mean, talk about, I saw those things. You know, I'd seen their pictures, you know, occasionally on Aquabid, and I'd go, yeah, that looks pretty nice. I saw those things. I'm going, holy cabole. Or as Norm Green was referred to in the Twin Cities, Norm Greed. So there you go. Yes, David Sam. So we've covered all the sports. <laughs> we have covered them all. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, yeah. So Jesse, you had those. Uh, you know those things. They just look great. And, uh, I mean, those were your buddy's uh, fish room. You know, those were so striking, were so good, so great to look at. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed that. Check out uh, Jesse's channel at HC Agua, and he's at his buddy Tom's house and going over some stuff. You have to look at these guppies. Oh, really, really cool. And uh, no, we have not talked bowling or pool. That's correct. And uh, women's beach volleyball and cornhole left out. <laughs> By the way, ESPN shows, and I'm not joking about this. You can tell I'm, you know, recently divorced and having a lot of time on my hands, spending a lot of time at home with my sissy dog. And uh, and let me tell you, they have the American Cornhole League. I'm not lying. Not a joke. And they have sponsors like Johnsonville Brats and uh, and uh, hymns that provide uh, baldness cures for people like me. There you go. 
competitive grade competitive grade Asian strain. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, Jesse, those things were just fantastic. There's one that I uh, that uh, ATFG has had had up. Yeah, you know, Madfish Diva. I think Cornhole's great too. I like playing it. I don't necessarily want to be watching it on TV. And uh, and uh, you know, and I'll tell you what. It's I. Uh, I wish they would bring this back, but I know that you know there's been lawsuits over it. Jarts. Jarts, they would throw this up. It had like a pointed metallic end. And it sort of worked a lot like horseshoes or cornhole. And you flipped them up in the air and it would come down as a jart, like a dart, into the ground. And you know people had to be impaled on that sucker. I mean, talk about great. Absolutely the most fun in the world. And uh, so there you go. And uh, yeah, jarts was dangerous. Uh, the other sport that I find highly under, God, now we're covering them all, uh, highly underrated is badminton. It's a gentleman's game, a gentle ladies game. And uh, so there we go. Yeah, my parents had a set of jarts. We played it. My dad would haul them out. Uh, my parents always had a backyard barbecue, a couple a year. And they'd set up the jarts and the badminton. And uh, it's all good. I've never done curling, Madfish Diva, even though I'm from Minnesota where they're you know, pretty good curling. Komen, Puda, uh, Pandora, Guppy, lots of amazing Asian strains. Yeah, no, the, absolutely they are. There are Chewy. No arguments there. No arguments. There's one that I I I have seen, and let me see if I see if they have it up right now at Aquabid. I saw it. I sent a, a picture of it to Doug Gray. And it just it hit me. But of course, this would be one no one would ever want. It's just something that I saw, and I'm going, oh. That's a good looking one. And uh, so let's see if our, our boys ATFG is up. Let's see here. And uh, let's see. I'm uh, I'm not high on that picture. It's uh, that's not really what I'm after. And uh, Let's see here. Yeah, I don't think they have it up here right now, but it's, I mean, it's really nifty. I'd put up the link if I see. I told them, I, I'm going to look real carefully. And uh, ATFG, uh, oh, okay, here they go. They have a bunch here. There's one of them I just am all about. I think, I think look just absolutely fantastic. And that isn't it. And uh, it, uh, it it just really, really, when I saw it, I was just going, oh, that is a good one. And, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you what. I am, uh, okay, is this it? Yeah, here it is. It's the Superior... Silver lace snake skin. Now I'll put the link up here. And uh, I've never done pickleball. I feel like I'm missing out on it. And uh, I feel like I'm missing out on the whole pickleball thing. It's, uh, you know, so it's all good. Ping pong. Yeah. You know what? I, we had a ping pong table in my basement. And I was pretty darn going good. It's been a long time since I played. And the time that I played before that, um, oh, let me put down uh, you know who. Um, it had been a number of years, like since high school. And I played probably about 20 years ago. 
and didn't take long to get those reflexes back. Those once those ping pong reflexes returned. But I, and when I was in high school, I worked at a job as a telephone solicitor of all things, setting up appointments to meet with people about air conditioning and heating for train. And one of the guys who was there was a diminutive fellow, uh, a short person. Uh, you know, it's uh, and this guy was a prof he was like the number five ping pong player in the uh, you know in the state of Minnesota when I was growing up. His name was Mitch Seidenfeld, and uh, and I will tell you. This guy watching him play uh, was absolutely uh, amazing. In fact, I just looked up his name, Mitch Seidenfeld Table Tennis, and uh, and uh, you know, and he is uh, oh heck, he's in the U.S. Uh, Table Tennis Hall of Fame. So uh, so there you go. And uh, so I didn't realize this. He's he actually went and hit that up. So uh, so Mitch Seidenfeld, uh, you know. So there you go. You see, you, you know, you think of people that you knew, and all of a sudden there you go. You know, David. Here's what my thinking is: is that. For guppies, guppies pretty much do, you know, can work in anywhere. I prefer, you know, my pH is just about se over seven. Uh, my uh, my GH is about, uh, you know, I have the strip test, which not necessarily the most accurate, um, which is about an 80. And then the KH, I think, is like 120 or something like that. Works out just fine. They're breeding like absolute, well, guppies. Guppies. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, you know, talk about a great place. Oh, uh, Bolo, by the way, the Wonder Dog, uh, went upstairs. Now, how do I know he went upstairs? I could hear him scratching on the carpet as he was getting ready to lay down and go to sleep. That's sort of what he does. Sort of what he does, and uh, he gets in there, which is perfect, because I got I to gotta set up for a shipment tomorrow, and uh, and so get, get at least the box ready to go, and uh, so I can get ready to go and do my next run of stuff. What else do I have? I have, um, speaking of... Uh, stuff around the old home uh i've got to go through like receipts and stuff and so there you go there's a lot of trading around so surprising us several different strains yada 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 Yeah, it's, uh, you know, pickleball, though, is in jarts where you have a, you have the ability to be uh, impaled. Just as, uh, as a deal right from there. Yeah, it, uh, by the way, I'm like, uh, I own the URL, mobguppy.com, and I'm guessing I'll have to set something up. You know, it's, uh, I think I'm going to have to do that. I'll do that after I get done and get moved and, you know, get that whole setup in place. It's, uh, you know, it's not like I don't have anything to do. I have so much to do here as I get the aquariums all set up. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's uh, Houston Astros. We haven't talked about baseball yet, and then we baseball. So there we go. So very, very funny. Very funny. 
Um, yeah, so, you know, just the whole process of getting that in place. Yeah, Aqua uh, Angelfish Plus, of course. Absolutely, Chewy. Doug Ray knows it, too. And it's kind of a neat thing to go to go through and watch what, what they have going on, all the different angelfish and the guppies and other stuff that guy has. So, or the lady has. I don't know if it's a guy or a gal. And uh, so, yeah, so that's pretty exciting all the way around. Um, speaking of... Uh, you know, going through and uh, and getting with the fish and all that sort of stuff. I look at all the different uh, guppy strains, and uh, and I just uh, you know I have enough right now. I think that uh, you know it's I, I'm not asked Doug about this, but I keep hearing that you should have like eight aquariums for one strain. Well, it's probably about right. But I don't. So I sure don't. So it's, uh, you know, so it's all good. All good all the way around. All right, gang, I've been here for about an hour and seven minutes. Let's see here. The person at Petco told me that she cannot catch saltwater fish as she has eczema and saltwater breaks her skin. Someone else inbound to assist me hey thanks brandon thanks for uh putting it up on the thing i really appreciate it you guys i didn't realize that eczema i uh, created i uh, uh, created the need that you couldn't catch saltwater fish i uh that makes uh i guess it makes somewhat sense about half the commercials are on tv are to end eczema so there you go. Again, thank you guys so much for coming and watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, uh, liking the page and, you know, subscribing and, and doing everything you do. Thank you so much. You guys have a great one, and we will see you on Sabado. That's Saturday in Espanol.